Hello everybody, my name is Chris Conkle. Welcome to Construction Cronies. Today we're going to be getting into construction contracts, the unit price contract. I've gone over drawings, specifications, and now we're going to get into contracts. Whether you're a subcontractor or a piece worker, you're going to want to know the unit price contract. There's so many types of contracts and it's up to you to know which type to use and when. If you've been watching my videos and studying, you'll know the delivery systems under which contracts fall under. Let's get into the details right away. I got the contract open in Nitro PDF right now and here we are this is a CCDC 4 contract right so this is under the Canadian construction documents but the same would be in this in the States it's gonna be very very similar okay we're gonna go uh, into detail a little bit but not too much because I want to be the, as quick as possible uh, it takes a long time to learn contracts but the table of contents will tell you exactly what's in this document and at any time you have any questions about the contracts or any type of contracts or this specific one let me know down in the comments and I'll get it I'll answer all of your questions within 24 hours and you'll have an answer okay so this is going to tell you everything this is so important to know even as a worker this is important to know because now you know what types of contracts you're working under and what policies are governing your actions right so you have the agreements the definitions are very important you have to, this will define uh, what the drawings are the, what the contractor is um, it's going to tell you what substantial performance is and all this stuff right so it's important to go through the definitions go through this table of contents and see what is like you know uh, get familiar with each and every um, uh, part because it's going to be similar from contract to contract, okay? And it's good to use standard documents because then you know what to expect, right? And plus, these documents are related to legislation so that if anything goes to arbitration, then you know um, that what is, what's going to hold up and what's not, right? Because these are solely based on local municipalities, different different laws in regions, and uh, will hold up in court a lot better than, than a contract written on paper, right? So here you go. Article of the work. The unit price contract is different. Like it'll give you um, a, a definition, right? So you're going to have to say, I'll do this for this much money, uh, this for that much money. It's not a one lump sum price, right? Like a general contract, like a CCDC2 contract, which will be a lump sum uh, price. This will, will be a contract between two parties that will give, a, it's a, exactly what it says, a unit price for each scope of the, each piece of the scope of work. It's mainly used in areas where there'll be un unforeseen work and you won't know uh, how to price it until certain things are done for example right uh, this could also be uh, a unit price could be a contract with uh, from a piece worker to um, a subcontractor in the sense that um, if I put up so much feet of drywall this is what you pay me right or this is what you pay me per square foot right uh, per unit price it's as simple as that so everything will be clearly defined here you see the schedule price is exactly what I was just talking about. Uh, description of the work here, unit of measure, uh, estimated quantity, uh, unit price, and then there's an estimated amount. Okay, so that's just an estimated amount. Um, there'd be certain lump sum tolerances and things like that you could add. You could do unit price with a guaranteed max price as well, which is an other type of contract. Uh, but if you will be getting into that into more of the delivery systems videos, right? Uh, but for now, this is basically what it is, right? So it'll tell you the type of work, the, the material and the, and the time and all that and a certain price per uh, unit. Okay, uh, but just look through it and uh, understand like the payment, for example, right? Um, you're going to need to have um, Pay, progress payments, right? So when you get so much done or there's a regular payment schedule, like on the say on the 1st and the 15th or something like that, uh, everything is um, decided up front before you sign off on a contract. This is so important to know as like a piece worker or a subcontractor going into uh, an agreement with somebody over a handshake is not that, it's not going to hold up anymore, okay? You need to cover your butt. Even if you're a piece worker, you need to have some sort of contract. I have a set of general conditions you can download off my website right now on ckvlogs.com. I have a full list of general conditions that you can use as a contract itself. Um, language of the contract, um, uh, succession, right? So uh, here's your signatures and all that. Uh, the definitions, okay? So change directive, change order, construction equipment, consultant, and, and so on, right? Uh, contract price. Uh, the most important like ones are the ones that so you don't necessarily know, but things that you would want to know would be um, like what they consider uh, pro like substantial performance, right? Not substantial completion, but substantial performance because there's your payment is very important. 
And in a in a contract like this, there'll be a holdback on all your checks, on all your progress payments, right? In case of uh, there's a the, the lean period, right? Until the lean periods run out or substantial performance is completed, uh, then you will get your holdback. Okay, uh, you gotta understand when you're building something, there's other trades that have to come in, and the project could last a long time, and um, you need to be able to get paid before you can't wait two years. To get paid right so what you'll have is yeah your portion of the work will be tested and completed at a certain point right so substantial completion is is, is like when you're about say 70 to 80 percent done your um your portion of the work then you're going to start thinking about substantial performance okay so which is when your equipment or your things have been up and running and they're tested okay um then they can be signed off it's important to know when to get paid, right? Because you can't be waiting forever. This the, the document will also state like how many days between payments, like between invoice and payment, right? Uh, roles of the consultant, so what the uh, consultants do. Uh, it will tell you a lot. Um, uh, like it will tell you who to talk to, right? The order of things. This is always based on the type of delivery system that is being utilized for the project, okay? Um, like uh, I was saying, uh, um, the traditional design bid build will usually be under the, the CCDC2 contract, okay? Um, whereas like the construction management will have a similar contract, okay? But it's just under a different, uh, the, whoever holds the contract will be a different, right? Not the, instead of the owner, it'll be the construction manager, okay? Um, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's really like, I, I mean, I could go into this for hours and hours and go through every little detail, but I'd rather you guys ask me the questions, uh, what you wanna know about contracts. This is just a brief overview of a unit price contract. Um, it's it goes into like look over it shop drawings uh use of work cutting and remedial work cleanup uh cash allowances uh contingency allowance uh, payment right so here we go uh, financing information required of the owner uh applications for progress payments progress payments uh, substantial performance of the work, right? So when the contractor considers that the work is substantially performed or if permitted by the lien legislation applicable to the place of the work, a designated portion thereof, which the owner agrees to accept separately is substantially performed. The contractor shall within one working day deliver to the consultant and to the owner a comprehensive list of items to be completed or corrected together with a written application for review by the consultant to establish substantial performance of the work or substantial performance of the des designated portion of the work <laughs> right like uh it's crazy that's a that's a whole mouthful to, a whole mouthful to swallow there but um you can you get what i'm saying right payment of holdback so every every progress payment will have a holdback it's usually about five to ten percent depending on the type of contract um progressive uh release of holdback Final payment, withholding of payment and changes in the work, owner's right to make changes, change order, blah, 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 change directive. Um, like there's a lot of stuff going on. Concealed or unknown conditions, uh, delays, so things like uh, liquidated damages, things like that will be designated in here. Uh, claims for change in the contract price, uh, quantity variations, default, owner's right to perform the work terminate uh, the contractor's right to continue with the work or terminate the contract. Uh, there'll be an indemnification clause and things like that in here as well. Dispute resolution uh, right here is awesome, right? So this will generally though, see negotiation, mediation, and arbitration uh, will be the routes to go. There very rarely will it go into litigation unless it's some kind of outside thing or there's very certain rules that are broken. Um, but that'll tell you right now that it's, it's while if you have a, a, like a claim, it could go, it's going to go through a process and it could be years before you get paid out on that claim, right? So be very careful when you're entering a contract. Make sure you can perform the work and you have the manpower, the, the people power, the money to get the, the, the contract done, right? Um, toxic and hazardous some substances. Um, this goes hand in hand with the specifications. The specifications are so important uh, to know and understand and and the contract and the specifications go so hand in hand. The drawings are just simple drawings that show you how to build the, the structure, but the specifications and contract themselves is how to administrate the project, okay? It's very important. Uh, it also will tell you the types and materials you need to use, right, throughout the specifications. Uh, the general conditions and all that will be in the specifications as well. Um, so 
this is always it goes based on the place of work, the local legislation there, and certain bylaws and things like that. So you need to know if you're a, a company that works in in various regions, uh, especially in across a country, for example, you'll know you'll need to know the local laws, right? It's simple as that, right? Workers' compensation, insurance, and contract securities. So you might need performance bonds, things like that, right? Bid bonds, all that stuff, right? Uh, which is like videos in themselves, right? Contract security. So here's the indemnification waiver of claims and warranty, right? Uh, it's also really important to understand the indemnification clause, okay? Read it thoroughly. Make sure you understand it, okay? There's uh, something called supplemental conditions that you can use, okay? Which is another video itself as well. But you can... Uh, uh, substitute the any of these um, uh, items in this contract. You could take them out, put them in, whatever. It's your contract. Uh, you can accept them or you can uh, send the contract back asking for changes and things like that, right? It's like completely up to you. Um, if you guys have any questions about contracts, let me know down in the comments. If you want to learn something new, learn something specific, let me know down in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what you guys think. Um, like I said, this this is so hard to do in a very short period of time. I went through many years of training to understand what I know about contracts. So I just want to hear from you guys what types of contracts you want to learn and what exactly um, parts of them you want to learn. I might have to break it into different videos. I'd love to do a live stream where we where we go over contracts, but whatever specifications, drawings, things like that. Uh, maybe a live stream for each one. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I really, really want to hear from you guys. And if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe right down below. Hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss when I upload videos. I go live twice a week. Uh, this is Chris, everybody. Bye for now.